So Prisa has played a ton of football in Costa Rica in the run-up to the CONCACAF Central American Cup. And the last time you saw us lose, well, that was the last time we lost. So why am I not smiling? I guarantee you're going to find out by the end of this episode. We've got league action, the Copa de Costa Rica, and of course, the quarterfinals. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 52 of the American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. Let's get right into the highlights. You want to see our first shot on target of the match? There it is. Diego Moreira burying the penalty in the 62nd minute. That was all we were going to need to beat Sporting FC at home. First of two matches back-to-back. -back. We are meeting up with them in just a moment in the quarterfinals of the Costa Rica Cup. This one brought a bit more action as we found our scoring boots Right off of the get-go, a beautiful play by Alejandro Braun to Lopez, 14 seconds in, putting Saprisa up 1-0. But Sporting, just a couple of minutes later, would get one back off of the corner, a header powered past Conte. It's 1-1, and then Sporting would take the lead. At home, Castillo up the left wing into the middle past the diving Conte. Vargas popping it home into the empty net. But then a turnover deep in their own end. Braun nodding it down. Marrera finding Lopez. He's got the brace. 2-2 two -two is your score. We haven't even played 15 minutes yet. We're still south of 20 minutes. Cordero feeding it wide to the left. Ramon into the middle, gets through Lopez. He was robbed, knocked out of the play, but Marrera able to put it home, putting Saprisa up 3-2, to two, and we would add the exclamation point in the 79th minute. Such patience from Marrera. 4-2, your final score. The board wanted us to make it to the semifinals, so we have appeased them. We've been drawn against Municipal Liberia. We've got highlights coming up against them in the league. Just a minute. That match is going to happen tomorrow because it has been scheduled for right after our quarterfinal matchup in the CONCACAF Central American Cup. Meanwhile, back to league action on the road against Alajuelense, and it would be Saprisa striking first. Quick pass from Mirez finding Tusha, tucking it past Arias inside that far post for a 1-0 lead, but Alajuelense would answer back. Beautiful ball forward. Rogerio getting behind the defense. His shot was blocked. It came to Sharino with his first goal of the year. The block moved Conte out of position. That's how they were able to score. Rogerio off of the corner kick. I guess we live by the sword, die by the sword. 2-1 a la Juelense, but we would equalize. Into the box, Espinoza, absolute sitter from Cordero. Pretty even matchup overall, although the XG was kind of tilted in our way. We trailed 2-1 at the half. We managed to pull out a 2-2 draw on the road. Remember that final score as we return home to take on Municipal Liberia. Ball in the mill, Morera. Alfaro, his shot is going to be blocked. The rebound, though, comes right to Cordero, putting it past the keeper for the 1-0 lead. Then off of the corner kick, first goal of the season for Duarte to make it 2-0 Saprisa. But the second half, it would be all Liberia. What a beautiful touch. Munoz settling it down, putting it past Conte to get back within one. And then off of the corner, sent in, popped up. Played out, Cambanero across, Munoz, his shot would be deflected past Conte, and there it is again, 2-2, your final score. Cartagena's on the road was up next, hey look, corner kick, highlight, Freddy Gonzalez putting it home, 1-0, Saprisa, but in the second half, Cartagena's would turn it on. Beautiful ball around the side from Alfaro. Contreras putting it past Conte to equalize at one. Alfaro again delivering far post. Villa with the header. 2-1 Cartagena's. And then Alfaro again stealing it away. Starting the break. Ball fed forward. Munguria in 3-1 Cartagena's. We would throw the kitchen sink at them in stoppage time. A penalty delivery from Alejandro Braun. He's got two goals on the year, both of them from the spot. And then in the 95th minute, a ball sent across from Mirez, played over by Espinosa, finding Lopez on the back post. We were able to draw even at the last moment. 3-3, back-to-back-to-back draws in the league would see us seed our position at the top of the table. So even though we are undefeated, 
Since yesterday's episode, we have actually slid down by virtue of these three draws. So surely we would return to our winning ways on the road against Perez Zeladon, a match we were massively favored in. I do not like being wrong as the ball comes free to Chavez, putting Perez Zeladon up 1-0. We would find an equalizer in the 48th minute. Chested down, Espinosa back for Emmanuel Chacon, his first goal of the season, rocking it at home past Alfaro. Then Alfaro sending it long, turning it over. Marrera, beautiful feed for Espinosa. Has Lopez all alone in the middle. It's 2-1 Saprisa, but 88th minute was all Perez Zeladon. Yonatan picking out the top corner for his first ever goal. And that late equalizer would seal our fate 2-2 the final score. Four draws in a row. We are, however, still undefeated in our last six. No activity in the first half, and it was Perez Zeladon. We met them back-to-back. Back-to-back is a big uh, theme of this episode, it would seem. And they took a 1-0 lead in the 50th minute, but five minutes later, ball fed through to Edward Lopez, picking up the goal to equalize this match at one, and he would not be done. Steven Akista straight up the middle. Beautiful first touch by Lopez, sending it in from just outside of the box. His second of the night, it's Saprisa two, Perez Zeladon three. He would make it a hat trick from the penalty spot. And finally, after a run of futility, four matches long, Saprisa back to our winning ways. A well-earned three points at home against Perez Zeladon. And believe it or not, that would be enough to propel us back to the top of the table of the Primera División opening stage. Now, Liberia in second place, two points behind us, along with Alajolense, actually. But Liberia does have a game in hand, so they do have the opportunity to retake the top spot. Winning the opening stage is very important to us, but even more key is winning on the continental level and getting back to the CONCACAF Champions Cup. All those highlights, I know this episode is going to be super long, but we do have to touch on the transfer window, which has slammed shut. We did send Luis Uzme out on loan to Point Fortan. Same with 20-year-old striker Mauricio Fonseca. He's on loan at Uruguay. And we did sell one of our defensive midfielders. You'll find out why in just a second. Emmanuel Chacon off to Liberia. $550,000 involved in that deal. The reason why we were able to say goodbye to Chacon is we signed not one, but two defensive midfielders. Pretty much because we were hedging our bets. We had put an offer in for one. Hadn't gotten an answer back. It was deadline day. We were like, we need to get somebody in. So we signed Jesus Ceballos. He was our number two choice. 1.3 million. We paid for him to Perez Zeladon. Five foot ten. Decent physicals. Nice strength, if you ask me. Good technique. His vision is very good and great first touch, which is what we are looking for in that DM role. But literally, as soon as we put pen to paper, we did also get our first choice. 20-year-old Costa Rican U-20 international Andre Castro. He comes in from Liberia of all teams. Beautiful technique, great teamwork. His vision is absolutely fantastic. High determination player as well. He's also got the stamina we need because if you remember, we've got a nice wide and long pitch. So he's going to need to be out there for big, big minutes. Alejandro Braun probably would have been my first choice to move out the door rather than Chacon, but we got the offer for Chacon. So Chacon it was. The moment we have been waiting for has arrived. It is the quarterfinal knockouts of the CONCACAF Central American Cup against Olympia in Honduras. First leg is taking place on the road. Here's how we're lining up. It's Conte in goal, Herrera, Innocente, Gonzalez, and Cordero as our back four. Aquista and Castro will be paired up in the midfield. Tusha and Getz on the wings. Lopez will be our striker. And manning the number 10 once again is Diego Morera. We will have to keep our eye on the fitness of Steven Akista. He has played a ton of football for us. So we need to make sure that uh, he's not going to be too knackered when it comes late in the game. Luckily, we have plenty of backup on the bench. Finally picking up a win after four consecutive draws. We have not lost since yesterday's episode in the final group stage matchup as we saw yesterday. Now we are not favored to win this match. That is 
pretty much because we are on the road. Both us and Olympia came in second place in our groups. Hopefully, we will be the better team when all is said and done. But the first highlight of the match is going Olympia's way. Marrera, great defensive play. Ball comes to Castro. He sends it forward. Gets with it. Already on a yellow card. We're about 25 minutes into this match. Akista, his pass is going to be blocked by Martinez. And here comes Olympia on the counterattack. Fed wide to the left. Rodriguez running into a bit of traffic. He's got Cordero shadowing him along the far sideline. Into the box. Fed through. Innocente, though, will clear it. Castro nodding it down. Getch regaining control. Marrera in the middle third. Across. Tusha. His pass is going to be knocked away by Brighetti. Ramirez taken down by Innocente, that errant left foot, and it will lead to a penalty opportunity and a great chance for Olympia to take a 1-0 lead in this match. Palacios gets Conte to guess incorrectly, and that's exactly what happens. We cannot give up opportunities like that. First shot of the match, almost 30 minutes in for Olympia, was that penalty attempt. And they have the 1-0 lead. We must turn things up so we will demand more from our team as we often do. A lot of tired legs out there for Saprisa. Maybe we should have done a little bit more rotating off of the corner. How did Cordero miss that empty net? First half in the books, 7-1, your shots on goal in favor of Saprisa, but Olympia has done a fantastic job of dominating the play, or at least the possession, in this match. So let us pump up our team as we head out for the second 45, and hopefully we can find the back of the net in this one. We've only allowed the opposition a pair of shots. We have taken more opportunities only two on target, however. That's a recurring problem for this Saprisa team. The hour mark has come and gone, so we are going to look to make some changes. Getch, with only one uh, goal contribution so far this year, will be replaced by Marvin Alfaro. Aquista is just done. Jesus Ceballos is going to come in. He will swap places with Andre Castro in the midfield. Two changes in this second half, possibly more on the horizon because we absolutely positively need to knock things up, kick things up a notch, as they say in the cooking world. Vallejos is going to track down the loose ball deep in his own end. Can we force a turnover against Olympia? That's exactly what we do. Marrera, he's got Ceballos. Ceballos drives it and just misses it wide. Beautiful opportunity Right there on a platter for Ceballos, and he could not take advantage. We are going to go on the major attack here as the run of play starting to go Saprice's way. Off of the throw-in, Tusha, Scott Lopez, his shot will be not blocked. It's going to hit the outside of the post. Second time we've hit the outside of the post on a deep, sharp angle shot. And sadly, this was just not our night. The Hay and Palacios penalty, the only difference in this one. Olympia comes out with the 1-0 victory. Normally down 1-0 in a two-legged tie heading home, I would come in with the attitude like, yeah, we got this. Except the second leg of this particular match just happens to be during an international window, and we have 11 players on our roster unavailable. Adding to that, Getch and Tusha both have been suspended for this match, so even if they were around, they wouldn't be able to play, serving out that suspension for getting too many yellow cards. So, heavy rotation in the home leg. It's going to be David Hernandez in goal. A back four of Luis Mora, Randy Duarte, Andre Castro sliding back from the midfield, and Hugo Cordero. Alejandro Braun and Jesus Ceballos will be in the midfield. Fabrizio Quiros will be at the number 10. Ramon getting the start as our left wing. Marvin Alfaro on the right-hand side. And up front will be Esteban Cordero. On the plus side, we have a fair amount of experience in our starting lineup. On the negative side, our bench, not so much. Lots of youngsters and backups to backups to backups. Olympia coming in playing a 4-4-2. They beat us 1-0. It was a penalty that was the difference 
in that match. Hopefully, if we can score a goal or two in open play at home, we should be a okay as the whistle has sounded and we are underway. It's a Prisa against Olympia, the Honduran side leading on aggregate 1 0. Throw in controlled by Brian. He's got Ceballos in the middle with space playing it forward. Cordero touches it back towards his own goal. So he'll lay it wide for Marrera. Sent in. Alfaro gets his head on it, but he cannot tuck it under the crossbar. One attempt to piece in the early going. A Saprisa looking to restart play from the throw in. Ramon in control will drop it to Duarte. Up for Ceballos quickly ahead. He's got Kiros feeding uh, Cordero, who's taken out. No call. Rodriguez, heavy touch, will lose it, and Duarte will take back over. Brand up the middle. Cordero trying to chip the goalkeeper off of his line, and again, just too strong, and he could not get that in. 3-1, to one, your shot's on goal. Neither team has hit the target yet in this match, and we're going to need to do it soon before I need to push the panic button and try to get something done and make it through to the semifinals. Now, all is not lost. If we don't win this match, we will qualify for the Continental Places playoff, which is how we qualified last year for the CONCACAF Continental Cup, but I do not want to leave it to chance. I would much rather get through to the semifinal. Ramon, to send in the corner, picks out Duarte. He can't win the header. Kiros will just pop it in on goal, and Guti will make a pretty easy save and look to send it long. Five minutes remaining in this first half. That is the lone shot on target of the first 45. And we end the first frame tied nil-nil. Did have to get a little cross at the team in our halftime team talk. Hopefully it will light the fire. Ball sent forward. Comes free Andre Castro with his first goal of the year. Heading it into the ground. Getting it past Guti to take the 1-0 lead. Of course, we're going to need more than that to get through to the semifinal. We are now tied 1-1 on aggregate. We cannot let Olympia into this match. 55 minutes in, we are going to demand more from our team. We are favored. We should be winning. We have started to pull away. We now have 12 shots on goal to their three. Four of them have been on target. And Alejandro Brand looking to send in the corner. Kiro's his header just wide could not take advantage of that set piece it has been a part of our game we've talked about this a lot that has been probably the highlight of the year we've scored more goals on corners i think than we have in open play don't check my math on that i'm kind of talking out of my butt here because uh i just haven't really looked at the stats olympia Kiro sweeps it away, but Brigenti able to get it back taking it deep but runs out of space romero up the right wing into the box, Brigenti. He'll have to retreat. Feeds it in near post to Samuel Martinez. His first goal of the year. And Olympia has retaken the lead in this tie. 2-1 by equalizing on the night. It's 1-1. 10 minutes remaining. And our time in the Con Central American Cup may be running short. So we are going to make some changes. First off. A tactical one. We are going to our all-out attack, which is something we need. Now, Ceballos has been very good, but he is not really much of a central midfielder. So we'll bring in Diego Mendez. Cordero's had not the greatest game, to be perfectly fair. So he will be replaced by a youngster, but a very promising one in Sebastian Azo FIFA. Kiros, I'm not sure if I want to leave him up there, but we're 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 gonna. Marvin Arfaro, though, will be replaced by Daniel Torres on the right side. And uh, Jorge Ramirez coming in as our left back. Some unproven commodities on the pitch right now for Saprisa. But when the chips are down, you kind of got to do what you kind of got to do. Alvarado, though, to throw it in. Olympia once again in control. Just over five minutes of regular time remaining. We must score again. In order to send this to potentially extra time, if not, to give us the opportunity to win it. We cannot move on if we do not score. Ramon ahead. Kiros, interesting touch, but he's still with it. Plays it into the middle. Mendez with a shot, and he cannot find the top corner. 
Beautiful pass by Kiros. Mendez, though, let us down. If only we had Tusha, if only we had Lopez. Having a continental match during an international break, in my opinion, is absolutely criminal negligence on the part of CONCACAF. But then again, it's CONCACAF, so why am I even surprised? Guti looking to send it forward. He's just going to roll it out to Agron. Mere seconds remaining in stoppage time here in the second half. Played forward. Cruz dropping it back. Rodriguez keeping control. Matute. Cruz up for Martinez. Spinning it towards Alvarado. Ramirez can't pick that off. So Martinez has it. Into the middle. Comes free. Rodriguez with a drive. Saved by Hernandez. But it's going to be a late corner opportunity for Olympia. If they even have the time to take this. We have played 96 minutes. Six of the five added on. Rodriguez waits and he's not even going to deliver the corner because the full-time whistle is blown. 1-1 one, one on the night. Another draw for Saprisa. Sadly, though, in the second leg of this one, it means we fall 2-1 on aggregate and we are not moving on to the semifinals. All is not lost, however, because we are set up for a Clásico de Buen football clash in the next round of the Central American Cup. We're taking on Herediano, which means we are going to have a triple header for you tomorrow. Liberia in the Costa Rican Cup semifinal, and then both legs against Herediano. Hope you are here for that. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you're brand new, welcome in. Thank you very much. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, bye bye